Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hair Loss Show. And in this episode we continue our series of uh, Q&A uh, sessions. And so stick around and we'll go through some more questions. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. To Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Thanks again for joining us. We've got some more questions that we're going to go through. Thanks for posting all your questions on the community post. Uh, we've been overwhelmed with questions, but we will try and go through a few more uh, today. So uh, today's first question uh, from Brandon. Hello, is microneedling beneficial in any way in preparation for an upcoming hair transplant? Can it be detrimental, i.e. scar tissue? Uh, that's great, and I don't know the honest answer to that question in the sense that I don't believe any uh, studies have been done to show what uh, the effect of uh, prepping the area uh, the recipient area prior to uh, hair transplant surgery actually is. But we do know conceptually that yes, it could be beneficial We're, with microneedling uh, because it, it promotes blood flow to that area, which will help uh, with the graft growth, etc. Uh, we've also looked at things like uh, PRP into the recipient area in preparation for um, for hair transplant surgery. And also the other thing that uh, people are looking at uh, as well is using nanofat and using the growth factors from fat also to prepare uh, an area. And that's especially useful if you're doing it into scar tissue. So if you've got someone who's got a scarring alopecia, sometimes Prepping the air, the recipient area with uh, something like nanofat or PRP can be beneficial in terms of graft growth in the future. Uh, so, um, uh, so, but the question is as well: Can it be detrimental? I guess if you're doing it too aggressively, if you're causing bleeding, if you cause scar tissue, then yes. So too much of anything is also not great. So too uh, too deep or too aggressive um, microneedling can be detrimental to the recipient area and may result in poorer growth if you were to be too aggressive with that. So hope that uh, answers that question for you, Brandon. Uh, next question uh, from Raymond. How important is spraying saline or ATP to the recipient area and keeping it moist? Uh, I will undergo a hair transplant and I asked about it and was told the recipient area should be kept dry. Thank you. Uh, I find your videos informative. Thanks, thanks for the uh, comment, Raymond. Uh, generally, we recommend in our clinic, we do recommend uh, spraying the grafts uh, certainly for 24 hours after, after surgery, so just to keep them nice and moist uh, while uh, the clot is, is sealing. Once that's been done, then you don't need to worry about it and we don't need to keep the, the area moist after that and they can dry and the, the surface can desiccate a little bit. But certainly from our recommendation, we do recommend to uh, spray the grafts um, in that first 24 hour period. All right, so hope that helps. Uh, last question for today from uh, Galopier Meneer. Uh, can I use more than two mils of minoxidil daily if I have long, slightly thin hair that catches uh, onto a lot of the liquid? I see that most of the studies uh, done are on men with short, thin, or no hair, where much more liquid makes it to their scalp. All right. And yes, that, that's, that's very true. Uh, and look, thank you for the question. The concept of uh, can you use more than two mils of minoxidil, what I'd say about that, first of all, is that it's a very nebulous concept because if you've got an area of thinning that's just, you know, limited to the, say, the frontal area, then probably two mils is probably excessive. Whereas if you've got a, a larger area that you're looking at uh, treating, then probably two mils is not enough. So it really depends on the an area that you're looking at cover, uh, covering that will determine the volume of minoxidil that you need. And look, even if you have long hair, you shouldn't necessarily need a lot more minoxidil because if you are applying it to longer hair, then that is just wasteful. So it's important to part the hair and make sure that you take the time applying it to the scalp and making sure that you get very little spillage onto the rest of the hair because you're just wasting minoxidil, you're gonna to have to buy more bottles and then you know the cost starts to climb because of that. So really, if you do have long hair, make sure you take the time 
time to learn how to apply it, part the hair, apply it to the, to the skin, and then move that parting along a, a couple of centimeters and do that sequentially over the area that you're looking at uh, treating. But yeah, a specific volume, uh, it really depends on the individual and the area that you're, you're looking at covering. All right, so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, thanks again for watching. That brings us to the end of uh, today's episode. We've got some more questions to go through uh, on the next episode, so I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.